Welcome to Hobby Life Weekly Market Chat. And we have Ben here. Hello, Ben. Hello, Johnny. Hello, everyone. Hey, Stephanie, you here? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello, Stephanie. How are everyone? So,、uh, you know, big news、uh, this week、um, FTX, Alameda, and also CC from Binance,、uh, a lot of things are going on. And I think some of you might not have, you know,、um, been updated. And Uh, in the following,、uh, we'll try to you know, just go through the threads and then、uh, we're going to have some、uh, conversation about it. Let's see、uh, we can you know, keep you updated from the market. So,、uh, but before all of that,、um, I'd like to you know, just have a general market overview. So, let's、we'll、watch the liquidity. So, the RP is staying flat.、Um, I think it's the same as last week. So, probably、uh, I'm not expecting a lot of、uh, liquidity being, being withdrawn from the market right now. but You know, this is external factors, and also we have some internal factors in the crypto ecosystem. And that's some big news happened to FTX and Binance, which、uh, I think might, you know, just uh, uh, inspire some selling pressure in the market. And that's not looking good for Bitcoin, also.、Um, the liquidity is、uh, looking flat, just like what,、uh, what I shown before that. And, you know,、uh, so, hey, Ben, shall we just. Start you know, talking about the FTX bank run because、uh, I think that's really crazy. And um, um, you know, before, before that, before this happened, and then a lot of people trust FTX, right? A lot of people trust Sam. We actually have a lot of faith to Sam because、uh, he has good、um, fame before, before that. <laughs> you know, what do you yeah, think about it? I think like,、uh, prior to FTX, everybody knows like,、uh, SPX is like,、uh, I, would, I would say genius. Uh, like、yeah. Also, like trading wise, like everybody respect him. Like even in the fin-、uh, traditional finance industry, we do care about him. However, uh, no, uh, FTX. I think as a platform, I think it's the second second largest uh centralized exchange in the world. So, uh, we never know like uh what what is in the books or in terms of like, transparency. Uh, we don't know anything. Uh, behind behind the scene in FTX, especially if like uh Alameda Research, uh we don't know uh what's the balance sheet because I think it's a private company, right? It's not a listed company. Yeah, yeah, and um yeah, there's a lack of transparency, but you know, based on some um I would say some shallow stuff, and then we tend to think that FTX is you know a really good company. Managing from plus, you know, they have a very high valuation and they have a lot a big customer space, right? So this,、uh, yeah, I think in the US is like、uh, apart from Coinbase, the、so, uh, uh, next is FTX and FTX.、Uh, yeah. I think they grew a lot from yeah, uh, derivatives, uh, options and futures.、Uh, I think most that's most of where their money is. Where you know, SPF is famous for its trading, right? So. <laughs> Uh, I think the I think this whole news started when you know Coindesk re- revealed revealed the whole uh Alameda Research uh balance sheet that was supposed to be private, and I think after that everything blew up from CZ, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And let me just have a quick look at the news that Coindesk released last week, so you know our audience can have a glimpse of what's happening there. All right, you see my screen sharing. Yep. Yeah. Just a minute here. So the news goes that Sam, you know, Bankman Fry and 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 his company FTX, uh, they have fourteen point six billion of assets as of June thirty, and then however they reveal that much of this is the the net liquidity of their assets, it was was actually FTT tokens issued by FTX. And then、uh, this worries some,、um, I would say, other centralized exchanges or other big investors because you know a lot of centralization and also F- F- FTT is actually a coin controlled by the company themselves, and then per centralized and the price can be manipulated very easy, and that's why、uh, this has raised a lot of concern out there. And、uh, Zizi, the CEO of Binance, and I would like to show you some tweets. Yeah, it, it started from there.、Uh, It began like that as part of Binance exit from FTX equity last year. Binance received roughly two point one billion USD equivalent in cash. 
and due to recent re revelations that you know the contest news and then they have decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on their books and that's that means they're gonna dump dump big shits on on FTT right and then yeah uh, yeah yeah it's reasonable I think yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think the first is it started off with like a CD transfer. I think five hundred million worth of uh, FT FTT tokens over, right? And I think that's yeah, we can see from the uh the bottom of uh, the right hand side, and then we have you know there's twenty three million of FTTs being transferred from unknown wallet to Binance, and that's uh yeah, you're right, five five hundred million, you're right. I think so. Uh, we can't see your screen. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. Just let me switch back, you know, to the tweets. <clears throat> yeah, my bad. Don't worry. It's back now. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, share to the PPT. Yeah, back now. Just a minute. I'm sorry for that. And then, you know, uh, from the right-hand side and the bottom, we see tw uh, ZZ tweet saying that 23 FTT, 23 million FTT being transferred from unwanted to Binance and they're taking out the FTT dump, right? Fans. Yeah, so uh, it's five hundred eighty million of uh, worth of of US dollar worth of FTT tokens, and you know, I think after after like CZ saying you want to liquidate, I think uh, Alameda Research, uh, I think CEO, I think is it Caroline? Caroline, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right, Caroline. <laughs> yeah, she said she will buy uh FTT at twenty dollars per token, right? Twenty two dollars yeah. per token. Yeah, but yeah. Here, here. Look at the bottom there. I, I captured the screen. Yeah. If you're looking to minimize market impact on your FTT sales, and then Alameda will be happy to buy it all from you today at twenty two. And the price broke below twenty two very soon after this one. <laughs> like that news. It, it the the funny thing is that if you refer back to the balance sheet that uh Cordes revealed earlier, right? There's yeah. I think there's only two hundred over million worth of cash in uh Alameda research yeah yeah so it they definitely do have the the funds to actually buy 580 million of, of FTE token back yeah and, and yeah. Zizi actually checkmate right Zizi, yeah Zizi, i think Zizi knew everything but just conspiracy yeah. theory not not very not not facts right don't take it as yeah. don't take it as facts and then um what Zizi explained you know Zizi tried to to explain the act for for, for dumping FTT because CC is very worried about uh, <laughs> the mistake that they, they learned from Luna and they are worried that the, the implosion might actually happen in FTX if liquidity runs out, right? And then it's true now, it's actually true and that's very pathetic, I think. Yeah, I, I think to be honest, uh, I, I'm not sure what uh, CC was thinking at the point of time, but I think he's thinking from uh, uh his perspective from like uh his business perspective like his company like uh he feel that you know FTX may be a risk and you know his token is I mean like um it's too there's a high risk it's a high risk token right now and they decided to liquidate the new risk from the books so I think for CD's part that I think he uh he did not. Uh, like realize such a big impact he made. Yeah, to, I, I I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. To actually uh escalate to the current situation which we see for the past two days. So yeah, yeah I think in terms of that, I don't think he wanted to make. I mean, I would say market manipulation, but I think the market responded very way, uh, neg I mean, negatively compared to what he wanted and yeah yeah, yeah cc originally might be there is their risk management team told him that oh no we are holding a lot of ftt and that's a lot of risk and, and we have to de-risk and therefore cc made a move and that's the rationale behind his act right yeah okay yeah I agree on that and um you know uh i'll show you other tweets because it's funny and then after that um Caroline, uh, we just talked about Caroline, the CEO of Alameda, offered to buy all the FTD token for twenty-two dollars, and then but um, ZZ, uh, uh, later we know that they, they didn't actually have the money. 
So it's a bluff, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bluff. <laughs> That's sad. And then, you know, after that, uh, people use this, especially users, I feel very empathetic. And also, uh, um, this, this is actually a strategy, right? Imagine if you have a lot of money staked in FTT and then FTX, and then you cannot move out your funds and then all of your, you know, savings or what kind of things, or your assets uh, will, be, will be gone. And the probability is very high. And, and that's where a lot of investors. Yeah, I think, um, I think from SBF point of view is like, um, this, uh, they have the enough funds to actually, um, actually, I think in, in terms of, we don't, we don't know what is behind FTX. We don't know how much cash they have, right? Yeah. But, yeah. uh, maybe he feels that, you know, they, uh, FTX is able to, you know, absorb all this, uh, self for, uh, for its, uh, FTD tokens with the help of Alameda research. Right. Yeah. However, if we look back at right back at, at the balance sheet, right, uh, most of uh Alameda research uh assets are actually uh contain a lot of tokens that are actually uh I'll say illiquid, 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 illiquid tokens or yeah. underperforming tokens, which yeah. their value it's, may be marked up. Points. Yeah, yeah <laughs> which values are marked up. So you know, you know, in one sense is. I would say it's over leverage. You know, we don't, we don't know what's the accounting standard that they use, how they you know value their assets to actually borrow funds, uh, for their books, yeah. as collateral. Yeah. yeah. So Depends. I yeah. I I like to show you this chart. Uh, this one is from doing analytics and some guy uh, analyze uh, the holdings of Alameda Research and also FTX, and we can see from the left hand side we have two uh, pie charts here. Is their majority of holdings being illustrated in this chart? So, um, you know, just look at FTX wallet balance. Most of them are actually FTT, right? And then as for Alameda Research, you just you just said that uh, they, they didn't have uh, a lot of, you know, sufficient USDC or USDT stable coins, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them actually from, you know, Shushi and then SLM and then Lido, uh, RNDL, GOG, Assets Infinity, XS, and then uh, RAND, some some small market caps, right? Yeah. So actually, look at that. Uh, this Alameda Research wallet, right? Is yeah, actually right. all their liquid, all their liquid uh funds, right? And yeah. again, we can see is there's not a lot. At, to yeah. Be honest. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. they only have twenty million USDC balance. Yeah. Like, yeah. If they and want other... to eat... Yeah, you're right. If they were to liquidate everything, I think they get around uh maybe at 80 million, 80 million of funds. Yeah, yeah. Because if you just dump all other tokens to get USDT or USDC and then you crash the market, and what you get is discount. Yes. Yeah. And FTX, a lot of FTT here. And then, you know, we're, we're, it's very obvious. We can see the outflow of money from FTX exchange to, 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 to outside, right? Other, other exchanges or wallets. And then... The net outflow for this week is standing at 11 billion and for 48 hours net flow is uh 680 million for 24 hours 344 million a lot of money being withdrawn from the from, yeah. from the exchange yeah and yeah wait a minute so shit. yeah so um that's that and you know later on uh, uh, today I think it's today, right? And ZZ just tweeted that um they are gonna uh help FTX, FTX uh sought help from uh ZZ Binance, uh because of their, uh, I think of their liquidity problem, and then you know ZZ just uh said that uh, today they 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 have a non-binding agreement to actually to go to go to evaluate or to assess if this deal is is uh is okay or not, and then ZZ is still. Uh, doing some investigation over the company and uh, seeing their assets in their their assets something like that. and um it, they have not actually come to a deal right a hey, doctor um you know uh what do you think about this you know the cooperation between F <laughs> you know, ZZ just offered to help SPF before of that but before this they they actually had a lot of beef and uh, I think some some rumors out there saying that they are actually competing with each other and they are they have been doing some aggressive things to each other yeah I think the 
on compression can achieved so fast because uh, CD may buy the FTX at a very low price. Uh, but um, whether it could be, uh, it is possible to for for CD to buy uh, FTX is also um, uh, a a question because uh, I think the uh, this this case can mainly have may maybe have a risk to evaluate evaluate the uh, American uh, laws about the uh, I think yeah. Yeah, the so I think it is it, it's very hard for CD to buy the FTX. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, it, it, it may, not, may yeah, it may violate the legal. antitrust law. Yeah, and and they still have not released the details of the deal, right? We we only have some uh, surface information. Yeah, and uh, and maybe CD, uh didn't find out the uh, large uh, debt, debt for the uh, FTX. And uh, um, we also know that yesterday the um, Commodity Futures Trading Commission of America will uh, supervise this purchase, purchase case. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, what do you think, you know, the outcome of the deal might affect the market? So let's imagine if you know ZZ agree agrees to buy FTX and also Alameda, and then uh, what 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 do you think about market reaction? What do you think about it, Benz? Any view on that? Mm, I you know the last time uh if we went, if you go back to like last time the uh, TikTok if you remember where uh Chinese com uh I would say a Chinese company what to like set up. Or what to buy over a US based company, right? I think the antitrust law comes into play of uh, what Stephanie mentioned, where uh, I think the last time that uh, Donald, uh, Donald Trump's administration wanted to stop the TikTok sale by the Chinese company. So they forced TikTok to have, I'm not sure, to have a, uh, to be owned by a US company or US conglomerate. I think that is what uh, uh, uh what's stopping CZ from acquiring FTX, and I yeah, and I think uh if you know if Binance were to buy over FTX, you know Binance would be like Binance would be like a super super huge uh, centralized exchange, crypto exchange right of them, and in terms of like uh market dominance or market share, uh I think uh in terms of like competition wise. Uh, we do not we do not want one centralized exchange to dominate everything, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We need we need some competition in terms of like uh, maybe innovation or something to actually uh incentivize uh you know, the big players to actually give more discounts and stuff like that uh, for the industry. So I think it's good. I mean, in terms of like business wise, um, uh, it's good that Binance will do. Uh, acquired FTX, but given uh, FTX books, uh, Alameda's books, I think CZ would want to acquire it. I think CZ wanted to do is maybe to build out FTX rather than acquire FTX. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, the deal, uh, the outcome of the deal is yet to be known, and um, you know, there is a lot of speculation out there, so make sure you, you check, fact check these information on Twitter, right? And, you know, just have a quick look at the chart, FTD chart, because that would be, I think, <laughs> we have to check this out. So give me, a, give me a second. Can you see my screen? I'm on trading view. Can you see? Yes. Yeah, perfect. And then we have FTT USD here. So let me just clear drawings. Go check it out. So let's move on to one day, and and that's tragedy. I say right. So the price dipped from twenty something. 
24 to 88%, you know, any of your short FTD? <laughs> I did it. You did Yeah, we didn't. To be honest, I didn't expect, like, things to pull up so much. So, so quickly, fast. right? Yeah, it's like, you know, I went to sleep last night. <laughs> uh, and When you woke up I, after I, this yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, I slept before midnight yesterday. I woke up in the morning at, at 7. I slept 8 hours of sleep. And I woke up like, what the hell happened to FTX? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, everything it's blew up overnight, right? Yeah, it, it's really crazy, man. You know, and it's really suspicious that Caroline, the CEO of Apple Media Research, they, they offered to buy 22. Yes. So I, I think she just made this thing way worse, right? Uh, I think she sort of like, you know, wanted to challenge CZ, you know? Oh, if you, yeah. Yeah. If yeah. she pulled out a challenge and CZ yeah. took she, out the she challenge. She, yeah, she thought CZ didn't have the balls to do that. It turns out that CZ, oh, CZ is the boss, right? He has yes. the balls. Yeah. If he's willing to dump 500 million worth of FTT into the market, what is like, you know, the rest? I think, you know, like Binance is like the, one of the few uh, initial investors at FTX, right? So even though they sell FTT tokens at current price, I think they are just break even. Or yeah. Tokens. Yeah. If we look at the chart of Binance BNB tokens, and then you know, right at the news release that that ZZ was going to you know, uh, um, purchase FTX, you know, just showing that the deal is going on, and then the price pumped to almost four hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Yeah. Almost four hundred dollars, and then, um. You know, comparing this chart to FTT, I think it's really, you know, just, um, I don't know how to say, I don't know what to say, actually. And um, CZ, turn, turns out that CZ was right. And yeah. what I mean is that, uh, still remember the tweet saying that uh, CZ explained for doing doing that because they learned from Luna and, and, and <laughs> CZ wouldn't pretend to make love after the divorce. And they are not against anyone, but they are just going to de risk. And you know, by comparing FTT to Nuna, and I, um, you know, before that, I, I, I'm on Twitter, and a lot of people, crypto native guys, crypto guys, crypto bros, uh, they, they said, um, comparing FTT to Luna is not reasonable because they are of different mechanisms, right? They have different tokenomics, yeah. and also they have different background. And then, but it turns out that the outcome is actually the same, man. I think the outcome, point. the similarity like between FTX and uh, Luna is over leveraged, in my, in my opinion. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Yes. I also and... want to show you something I found on uh, Twitter, you know, a piece of analysis regarding um, a piece of analysis regarding Alameda's uh, liquidity problem since um, I think it's since, let me just check it here. Here. Sorry. Uh, lots of tweet. Let me just get back here later. So uh, let me just get back to the PowerPoint first. I'll show you the tweet later. Um. You know, uh, some guy just anal analyzed the tweet uh, saying that, you know, Alameda was actually broke back in May and they had uh, a lot of FTT being, being, being minted. FTX actually uh, bailed out Alameda in May using FTT. What do you think about this possibility, Benz? Do you think it actually happened or might be some, just some fake news? But I will show you the tweet later. Just give me two sec two, two minutes, right? Oh, what's your question again? Sorry. Yeah, what, what do you think about, you know, some people saying that uh, Alameda Research was actually broke back in May together with Free AC and also Lunar. They actually had a liquidity problem back then. Do you think it's just, you know, some fake news or something like that? I mean, it could be possible when, uh, like I uh, said earlier, where we don't know how, uh, how they account for their assets in their books, whether 
this asset is uh marked up to previous uh, highs you know yep. at, the, at that kind of price and hence they can able to you know uh, pull up as a collateral to borrow funds to actually build out uh, other crypto projects yeah right so at the point of time i think alameda uh build up a few uh, projects and yep. i think they use the underlying token as collateral to borrow funds for that for that kind of build up yeah right so i think at the point of time uh Alamar could be you know uh could be broke but we don't know what's going on behind the scene yeah again no transparency and you know yes that we don't have information it's hard to to you know to to value stuff right yes yeah and uh you know i, I but you know not not yet fact tracked but uh some transactions some suspicious transactions being revealed by some you know some guy on Twitter might be an analyst um, it says that on September 28 over 8.6 billion USD worth of FTT was moved on chain and that was by far the largest daily move of FTT in tokens existence and one of the largest daily move we ever record at coin metrics and some people speculated this move they go and track on they go and check on either scan and they found that you know uh uh the transaction that interacted with a contract from FTD ICO, that transaction. And then it's actually from uh the the contract deployer, right? ICO FTT from yeah, from FTD ICO and then uh and then that this guy found that Alameda and FTX were intrinsically connected from day one and Alameda obviously participated in the FTX ICO and what he meant is that these two companies actually had a lot of deals under on the table and then it's really suspicious they uh, FTX might actually use FTT to bail out Alameda back then yeah what do you think about this here Almeida um, blew up in Q2 along with three ACs and another is only survived because it was able to secure funding from FTX using as collateral as a 172 million FTD that was guaranteed to fast four months later. You know, uh, we just had the... Let me just get back to Dune Analytics. Uh, it's, uh, I, th I think, you know, they, they, they are not contradictory at least because Alameda, you know, was still holding a lot of FTT, so um, you know, just saying, yeah, right, just saying. So, uh, let me get back to Twitter. So that's correct, right? So, uh, yeah. back back in Q Q two, right? I think it's Q two. Yeah. So, uh, the hundred seventy million worth of FTT is supposed to be vested. I think one two months ago, I I mean invested unlocked. So they transferred this from Alameda to FTX, am I right? Or transferred? Where did they transfer it to? Uh, from FTX to Alameda. Oh, okay. Yeah. As collateral. So, so it's like, they, are, they are like borrowing money from one another, right? Yeah, but you know, the collateral is being used as FTT, and that's where the problem is. You can use USDT or USDC or Bitcoin or Ethereum to to pledge as collateral. That's reasonable, right? Because um, they are relatively stronger and they have more uh, market cap. At least they have more liquidity. They are liquid. And what's wrong with FTT is that do you think it's liquid? <laughs> no. Okay. If if we we. If you look at you know we go to coin Gecko right now if you look at the maximum supply of ftt it's only yeah, okay. 330 million yeah let me let me just get get back to coin market cap okay you go on yeah okay, the maximum supply for ftt is 330 million yeah and ftx transferred more than half of worth of ftx over to alameda And I think this 172 million is are those that are vested, right? It's not supposed to be like seen, not supposed to be circulated, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Should not be released into the circulation. Yeah. So basically, the price was just 
a lot of speculation out there, right? Am yes. I right? Yes. So if you look at the current price now, the fully diluted market cap. Yeah. Right? So FTX yeah. transferred seven hundred fifty million worth of FTD tokens over to Alameda Research. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just crazy. I think Sam is got gonna get arrested for doing that. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. It's, so, it's, it's, crazy. it's so crazy when you think about it. It's like, you yeah. know, usually when we look at a project, right, we look at uh the market cap first. Yeah. So whether whether it's good, whether it's reasonable, and we look at yeah. the tokenomics. And if you know a fully diluted company worth one point five billion dollars suddenly move more than half of their tokens to somewhere else with supposed to be tested is so suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. Here, four point one nine billion dollars worth of FTD and just send it to immediately back to FTX. So basically a collateral. They yeah. use it as a collateral to get a liquidity from FTX. And yeah, just a lot of speculation here. You know, we are not working inside FTX nor Alameda, and that's why we, we can fact check this thing for you guys and just you know um it might not be true actually. So, you know, just saying because we don't have the evidence. We are just speculating and you, you know, just uh, uh, the thing it, you know, it, it's reasonable and also it, it might happen. It's just like that, right? Okay, so uh, let me just get back to um, our sharing here. So, um, you know, they had the deal announced today and then it's still going on. And whatever the outcome is, um, I think it's better to safeguard your security and your your assets. Sorry, to secure your assets, right? Uh, not saying that you you shouldn't, you know, just not saying that you should just quit crypto. Um, just saying that you have other means of securing your large funds, like putting in cold wallets or a uh, hot wallet, and make sure you own the assets. And then CC also said that you know all crypto exchanges should do a uh, Merkle tree proof of reserves. Um, you know, in, in case of bank run, and it will not hurt. And it's reasonable. I think um, exchanges, even even our boss, Justin, uh, Justin also said that uh, he would like to uh, do the uh, Merkle tree proof of reserve. And that's actually quite appreciative and also encouraging for other users to you know, to use our uh, hobby products, you know, because um, as long as the platform owner clarifies that they have uh, the liquidity to supply they, they, they don't even use the client's funds and that's the most important thing and um, you know this is the most important thing for an exchange to operate in my opinion so uh, a lot of FUD out there uh, thought fear uncertainty and doubt occurring out there and you know just just uh, you know found this tweet from Jeremy Alire, uh the CEO of <clears throat> from USDC Circle, and then uh, he just clarified very quickly that um, they don't have exposure to FTX, and that's good news, at least, right? The stable coin is being stable. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, from, from I think in terms of stable coin, uh, USDC is one of the I think I would say the most secure one out there, right? Because uh -huh. Most uh -huh. of their most their underlying assets are um, treasuries, uh, notes, which is supposed to be stable, and that is a one to one reflection of whatever they mean, whatever stable coins they mean. So, uh, in terms of that, uh, I think users would have a problem in drawing or converting uh USDC back to fiat. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Um, you know, apart from you know safeguarding your assets and also, you know, just paying attention to the outcome of the deal, uh, we also want to, um, look at, uh, this thing Solana. We haven't talked about Solana, right, Benz? Yeah. And uh, we should be worried about you know the Solana, Solana thing because. Uh, you you see my uh, screen, 
You see my screen here? Yes. Okay. So Solana falls and speculation centers on links to Sam Bankman Fry's FTX. Why are they related? Because Sam is a very big investor of Solana. When Sam runs out of liquidity, what he will do is to sell his Solana in his pockets. And that's what worry us, sorry. Yes, uh, you say that Solana, uh, SPF and Solana, they are they are very close working relation with one another. So, uh, like initial, I, I think we go back to one year ago where, uh, where uh, when Solana just came out, or I would say came when just started to you know go to the moon, when it broke like <laughs> yeah. hundred, they almost yeah. reached two hundred US dollar. Yeah. So, uh, at that point, uh. SPF is like, you know, everybody was like raving about SPF. It's like, you know, he's, he's like God, uh, the projects he, he invested in, he took part in, in building on this project on Solana. You yeah. Know, he's doing really well. Everything about Solana was like, you know, really good. So yeah. I think uh, behind the scene, uh, I think that uh, Alameda has a lot of positions on uh, a lot of Solana projects as well as Solana po uh, points, tokens. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, you know, for, from, from our part, we don't know how, how much they have, but in, if uh, FTX were to be, you know, liquidated or Alameda be liquidated, uh, all these coins will start, you know, pouring in and they have to sell off all these tokens, sell down all these tokens. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I just want to check, you know, the Solana uh, staking condition right now. Okay. Active staker, 500k total staked. So much money here. And then, you know, if we could find, you know, the wallet of, uh, FTX and also Alameda holding Solana and staking Solana, and that would be a very helpful piece of information. I just, you know, uh, on Twitter, I found this thing and I'll like share with you guys. And let me just switch back to Twitter and share. <clears throat> Here, you see this? So, uh, last one blew up. I will keep updating. This guy goes more than double SOA to be liquidated now, almost 1 billion. Wonder if Alameda just unlocking it all. You seeing that? Um, the this the unstaking is just starting, and you no, know, we also see a Solana price dipping a lot. Yeah, what actually shows here is that they will have a lot of Solanas deactivated, and uh, that's mean that means uh, some Solanas are going to circulate into the markets. They're going to you know inject some liquidity here. So let me just switch back to. Uh, trading bill because we are going to look at the price of Solana and as well. Just a minute, okay. Uh, wait a sec. It's here. Oh, eighteen point six. So the third coin here is Solana. Um, you know it dipped from thirty something, thirty three, yeah. on seventh of November. Uh, November this week, early this week, dumped. Whoa, fifty percent. Explode fifty percent, and that's a lot. And people are actually speculating the price of Solana will, will you know just diving deep into the ground. That's crazy. Do you think? What do you think about it, Benz? I think it's. I think it's that everything blew up really and become like a self fulfilling prophecy. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like um, it all started when you know Alameda, then to FTX, and to Solana, and all the every all the players under this ecosystem. Yeah, and I don't think that you know, uh, the whole crypto is not like backed by a central bank where you know they can be built up instantly. Yeah, just like you know, uh, the case of Luna, there is no. Uh, when VCs of these that actually can come and save a project that is worth billions of dollars, mm -hmm. uh, they rather let the project die and they can start another new one. 
I think th- this. I think this is like uh, I think it's it's the pain and beauty of uh, crypto, or you say decentralized platforms where new one and new one can you know things come and go really very fast. Yeah, and yeah. I think uh, as uh, you know, as someone who is inside this industry for some time, I think that uh, we this is something that is like something that's too big to fail. And yep. yeah, and it just everything just escalate down and the the ripple effect is too huge. Hence it this resulted what happened. But yeah. I think I think like I, I'm sure that you no know, Johnny, we always see like projects come and go, you know, projects die off. Yeah. 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 So uh, to me to me it's like you no know, this kind of things happen and you know it's unavoidable. Right, unavoidable projects come and go. Yeah, actually, we've we've seen a lot of projects die in the space, especially big one, Lunar. Just forty five Lunar. I mean, half year ago, and then today we we have another one. That's crazy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but you know, looking at Bitcoin, we just lost the support. The support is broke. Support from uh since um June. I would say mid June at seventy k, five hundred and something, and then today we gone lower, seventy k two hundred and fifty, and some technical traders are going to you know, are bearish. They they going going to be bearish, and it's, it's yeah. like a cup and handle, right? It looks mean, like cup and handle. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah, but the handle was broken, man. Yes, so <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of like technicals that we can look at. So this can be a a a bull trap as well. You know, the past few weeks that everything was going up. Oh, you're right. Yeah, a lot of bulls are actually trapped here, yeah. and um, you know, for for that we have to look at the uh liquidation events that happened today and yesterday to see if a lot of liquidations were you know were, were, were wiped and um I, you know expecting a lot of long liquidation you're right and I, I agree on that yes that's that's bad because people are going to short sell Bitcoin and pushing the price lower you know, um, you, know you know we are talking about like you know uh, how low will Bitcoin go? Like, and yeah, Stephanie was idea. talking about yeah. Stephanie was talking about uh, it may go to around thirty thousand. <laughs> really? Just a That's joke. <laughs> <laughs> Just a joke. Yeah, but to be honest, it, it broke. It broke like no previous low. Mm-hmm. Like uh, previous low, and previous in a way, low? I mean like the previous low for the past few months. Oh, oh is, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this one, yeah. This one, he broke through. He broke yeah. through. Uh, we yet to see whether there will be a reversal, but I think it's right now with everything, no macro conditions comes into view, with mm-hmm. like so many, uh, like a uh, case of FTX, you know, it's very, it gives a very bad, you know, bad aftertaste yeah. for people who want to come back crypto. Yeah. After yeah. like one year of one one full year of like bear market. Yeah, talking about bear market, you know, uh, important things coming out tomorrow. That's the CPI, and it's gonna affect the market very much. I think, in my opinion, because I think it has not been priced in, right? This yes. one, and we are all waiting for data to renew release, and let's see how market pricing this data. So if it comes out higher than eight percent, what do you think, Benz? Higher than eight percent. Higher than eight percent. How will people price in this news? I think it's bearish. I think it's bearish. If it goes above eight percent, I think I think right now, if you look at uh the current probability for uh December's FOMC rate, right, yep. it's almost a 50-50 split between the fifty basis points and the seventy five basis point actually yep. on December. So. Uh, with 
uh, labor data uh, you know pretty stable for the past few months despite no interest rate hikes uh, and if CPI data were to actually go beyond eight percent it's definitely bearish for them for macro market or let's say uh, for risky assets yeah. because we we to be honest we haven't really see like the how the in, the rise in interest rates suck the liquidity out of the market yet because from my own opinion i feel that the fomc uh the feds have not really done a really good job in uh, their balance sheet reduction yeah because if they were to really uh do uh i would say a massive one but uh uh i would say a more uh uh, I would say a larger scale uh, balance sheet reduction, we will definitely see uh, more effects from you know, the, the liquidity in the, in the change in liquidity in the market. However, the liquidity in the market is still very high. So we don't know, to be honest, I, I have no idea where the money is going to. Maybe all the money has been going into uh, fixed income uh, yeah. bonds. So yeah. yeah, like I I... No, I'm starting to feel that the you know, U.S. monetary policy is, in a way, is not effective as not it used to. But yeah. this is just my opinion. I mean, like, you know, it, it, I'm not here to strike any fear to, uh, to viewers and, you and everyone. Yeah, but you yeah, but to be honest, uh, my I think from from my professional opinion, I think that uh, there will still be some pain ahead. However. Uh, we I think you know two episodes ago we did mention about uh you know the terminal rate of the U.S. uh terminal interest rate of the Fed which is around five percent and it should peak in around January or at least like Q Q one uh yeah next year so I think that is a good time where you can start to look uh where you should invest your money in and you know right now I think this is a good time to actually start. To cherry pick what projects that you know, is up and coming, especially when uh uh big techs like you no know, recent news like uh, uh Meta right Meta collaborated with Aave for their the FTFS I think is the uh decentralized story as well yeah, as Aave has been making progress. Yes. Yeah, Dota, what do you think about Aave? It's definitely our way. Yeah. Uh, you mean no, the way. project that supports the storing data uh, right? meta? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I think is is a good start for uh meta because it's uh stock price uh and a very good uh price and uh our way is a very important uh. Uh, uh, fundamental uh devices for the uh, uh for the Web three project. Uh, I think Meta wants to uh battle with the Twitter or the Musk, so uh, uh it chose to incorporate with Awave. I think uh is a good start for uh for Meta to enter the Web three world. And we also see a lot of, you know, institutional adoption going in the space. I wonder why, you know, when when this this news come out in bull market and that's gonna be a lot of pump, but we're in a bear market. If we have this kind of news and, and that basically means that uh my my hints that big buyers are actually big players are actually, you know, going into the space and flushing our retails. <laughs> what do you think about this, Spence? Mm -hmm. I, I to be honest, uh, just last week I was still thinking, you know, uh, it could be the end of the bear market where you know, big tanks are coming in, institutional investors are coming in to yeah, back yeah, into yeah. crypto. Yeah. And and this FTX thing blew up. Oh, I was yeah. like, damn. Damn. Yeah. Everything... We're, gonna, we're gonna come to an end of the bear market. Yes. Because, oh, cool. because we, we see that you no, know, we saw 
uh, Bitcoin uh, went past twenty one k resistance, right? Yeah. Then and all these projects, a lot of projects have been doing well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It, it's I I kind of dis- it's kind of disappointing. It's kind of disappointing to be honest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> but you know, talking about bear market survival things. You know, just make sure your assets are safe and you're being staked in something stable. So uh, staking is better than, you know, trading frequently in, in bear market. And a lot of volatility going on in the bear market. And, you know, um, some, some, something would be better than trading against a trend. You can do staking. You can lend your money uh, on Aave because decentralized uh, finance uh I think they have proven twice that they have value. First of all, we have the bear market in 2021, and then after that, they survived. And today we have the uh, FTX uh, implosion, and then they survived too because uh, they would do the liquidation without, you know, they have the charge, they have the uh, power to do liquidation. They don't actually, they, they can actually survive all of this. They are safe. Uh, assets being put in DeFi is okay. And also, um, you know, assets being staked in good exchanges, <laughs> that would be better too. And, you know, just just talk, just saying staking and, and hobby users, you can actually enjoy up to 3% APY when subscribing to USDT. Also invest products in a hobby app. And, you know, as shown on the right-hand side of the, of the screenshot, you can see you can earn 3% APY on hobby app. And also, you know, we are upgrading things and then um, uh, users might, might enjoy up to 10%. Uh, later on, when we have the full function of you know the auto, auto invest products, because it says it, we're actually upgrading the auto invest products, and yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, so uh, before all of this, um, you know, uh, as I, I would like to say that you know, and uh, FTX thing is actually very, very, very bad thing for for the crypto, and you know, a lot of us are worried about the the future and. Time um, might be a hard time, and uh, in the coming coming weeks might be more more implosion news. What do you think about it? It's definitely, Doctor. Do you think there will be more more implosion, just a domino effect of FTX hole in their balance sheet? Could you please repeat your question? Oh yeah, I I, I just I just said that. Um, do you think there will be more implosion? So there are more exchanges, you know, going uh, having this kind of problem later on because of FTX connection. Yes, uh, yes, I think so because you never know what will happen in the crypto industry. Yeah. Um, because after Luna event, we we think that uh maybe uh next year we have our uh we'll stop the bear market, but the FTX yeah. event. Uh, yeah. Start. yeah and but yeah. it's a good news for uh general users because uh, uh we have time to buy a, a very cheap price yeah uh, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah and uh, uh users can buy what they want uh, like at a very low price like btc and uh, eth so actually good time to you know buy cheaper not to buy yeah. buy high sell low, right? So yeah. yeah. So last, um, make sure you have your hobby apps trading actively so you can earn some crystals and join the candy drop event. Some lucky stars will be awarded with up to hundred USDT and we will notify them via SMS. And this notification will be uh you know, uh, no the candy drop event will be delivered within twelve hours. So make sure you trade to earn crystals and join the candy drop. Make sure uh so wish you all have a chance to earn a reward and i hope you good luck and i also want to thank banks and also stephanie for joining the market chat today you know definitely had a good conversation with you talking about ftx and also cc thing okay, thank you very much johnny thank you dr stephanie thank you best thank, thank you, you. Dr. yeah well i'll see you guys next okay. week thank you for listening again yeah, thank see you all next week thank you bye-bye